Happy Saturday. What I'm going to do today is shift gears. You know, like Sanford talks about his power shifting. Uncle Brian's going to do some power shifting from first to second gear. First gear. Pertaining to yesterday. Uh, I got a comment that was, was very good. Uh, excavator. Sorry, I don't know your name. That's all I know you by. You raised a very good point. About, you know, foreclosures can take a very long time before they actually get you out. You had a neighbor that took a year. The guy stayed there for a year. I assume he wasn't paying his mortgage for a year either. You know, waiting and waiting and waiting until there was a knock on the door one day. Okay, pal, time to go. But in the meantime, there's always communication between the bank. You know, it's not going to come next weekend and throw them out. Uh, and I, I know a few things through the people. I had an aunt when she's, she died. But I remember many years ago, she was a realtor, Evelyn Medeiros. And uh, she was a realtor. And then she brought another woman in with her, Dorothy. Dorothy Santos, the two of them. Evelyn and, Evelyn and Dottie's real estate. And they did pretty good. They did pretty good. And I found out things. You know, when you know people involved in things, you find out things you would never know. And one day we're talking about a foreclosure. It was someone in the family. You know, someone in the family. Not close family, but kind of distant family. That was, uh, went to a foreclosure. He stayed in the house for two years. Two fucking years. Before they finally forcibly evicted him. The constable showed up at the door with a bank representative and a locksmith, you know. And uh, he was put up. And evictions, uh, evictions. The eviction, along with the foreclosure, the eviction is where they forcibly now get you up. Uh, these things take time. Even with regular evictions around here. I know people that you know, property owners. I own property with my brother. We have six rental units. At one time, they're all very good tenants. They pay their rent, they take care of the place, you know, no complaints. But a few years back, we had this one person who didn't pay his rent for eight months. You know, that was a real fucking deadbeat. He worked his shit. What's to say he had his little habits? He liked to go to Foxwoods over in Connecticut, you know, in Mohegan Sun. He liked to gamble. He also liked to drink. He used to hit the bars. And, you know, his money went for what he wanted, you know, for his own self-enjoyment and not pay his fucking bills. They didn't pay his rent for eight fucking months. So we got to go to, you know... uh land court here, you know, renter's court, and, uh, you know, file an eviction to get him out, and it takes time, they want to give him time to find another place, and then, you know what happens, you know what, and I know other people it's happened to, uh, the person still don't want to fucking leave, you know, they say, well, you know, a lot of cases, I'm not going to piss anybody off, but, you know, racism is brought into it, you get minorities that they want to play the race card. Oh, they want to evict because I'm black, because I'm Hispanic, because I'm this, because I'm that. No, I want to evict you because you're not paying your fucking rent. You know? And, uh, where am I going to go? I don't have money to, you know, first and last in security to get another apartment. We haven't been paying your rent for eight fucking months. Shouldn't you have some fucking money? You know? Anyway, this went on for another six months. She's not paying me and my brother any fucking rent. We didn't know what he had done to the place until we finally got in there when we got him out. And we had to go there with a sheriff, you know, and a locksmith with a court order this time telling you have to leave right here and now by 12 noon on this date. You know, there was fucking moving vans outside. Took all his shit out, put it on the fucking sidewalk. He said, you got a choice. You get rid of this yourself. If we put this in our vans, it's going to be put into city storage and you're going to have to pay a fucking storage fee if you ever want to get it back. Okay? Anyway, make a long story short, the only way we could get this motherfucker out, the court said, well, listen, if you want him out now, they call it cash for keys. This is happening. This happened across the country. They know how to play the system. You know? Oh, well, I'm a single mother. I got two kids. What am I going to do? They put sympathy on them. Make a long story short, the common practice around here is Cash for keys now. Okay, you got 30 days to get out. You don't have first to last security to get out. You know, me and my brother had to give him $5,000. People have to give them $5,000. That should be enough to cover your first to last security. Okay, now you got the money to find another place. You got 30 days to find a place. Now you get the fuck out. If not, we're going to remove you. We had to give that motherfucker $5,000 to get him out of there. When we got in, it cost us almost $16,000 in fixing up things. He had fucked up the bath. It, it was a fucking mess in there. It was an absolute fucking mess. It was trashed. 
you know. But we had got complaints complaints from other renters. Hey, they make a noise, this, that, you know. We think there's people coming in here buying drugs and shit. You know, it was a fucking disaster. Fortunately, the new people that went in after we renovated the place, very nice couple, they got a small kid, you know. But it's real hard to get people out these days. With foreclosures now, it's very costly for a bank. I remember my cousin telling me, she says, you know, banks don't, banks don't want your house. They want their money. They give people every opportunity. They offer restructuring their mortgage. Okay, listen, we'll end it right here. We're going to start you fresh. You owe, you know, a year in back mortgage payments or whatever. And like I said, this doesn't happen overnight. It's many, many, many mortgage payments that they've missed. They'll tell them, okay, listen, even before they go into foreclosure, they're offered many options, many ways of help. Okay, listen, you were having a hard time then. Oh, you say you're on your feet now. Okay, listen, what we're going to do is your mortgage payment, let's say, is $800 a month. Just want to figure out. Okay, listen, for the next year, it's going to be $1,000 a month. The next for $200, that'll make up for your back payments. And you go on your happy way. You stay in your house. We're happy. You're happy. We're getting our money. You got your home. Everybody's happy. Says, but they don't do that. They won't do that. They offered them the op option of sell it yourself. Short-term sale. At least sell it for what you owe in the balance of your mortgage. You know what I mean? At least. And even then, they'll give you a break. If you're able to do that, even though the foreclosure papers have been filed, before they actually process, there's a procedure that it does take time in itself, and it's costly for a bank, you know? Okay, you sell it, we get our money, you leave, we get the house. We won't put you down as a foreclosure to fuck up your credit. We'll even give you a break on that. He said, but sadly, most people don't even give a fuck. These are people that, they just don't give a fuck, you know? She says, and I've been contacted by banks and other realtors in the city. Hey, listen, we got this foreclosed property. Uh, we'd like you to market it for us. You know, bank don't want to do it themselves. Now it's going to cost them money. She says, I made a lot of money from banks, <laughs> you know, selling off their foreclosed properties. You know, it doesn't matter to me whether it's a person that's selling it that calls me or a bank saying, listen, we got these people out of a house. Now it's sitting there empty, you know. We'll take a look at it, assess it. And they take a look at it and assess it, even, even while the foreclosure procedure is going on. The bank wants to know what to expect, what, what they're going to have to do if it needs any fixing up to make it presentable enough to be able to sell, to at least get something out of it. If it's so run down that even if they sell it, it's going to be at a loss. Now they're losing money. By law, the person is going to be responsible for any excess over what they still owe on their mortgage that the bank couldn't recoup on a sale. They know these people are never going to fucking pay. They can drag them through court all they want. It costs the bank more money on lawyers than any money they'll ever get back from these fucking deadbeats. So it's a lose-lose proposition in most cases, you know, with banks when it comes to foreclosures. She says, Brian, I've gone to fucking properties where they finally got the person out. I've gone to properties while they've already been served. Listen, we gave you an extra six months, an extra eight months to try to sell it, try to do something. You haven't done nothing. Now on this date, at this time, we're going to be here with a locksmith I'm a constable and a bank representative, and you're going to be forcibly removed if we have to. We'll grab you and throw you out of the fucking house if we have to. And I've dealt with them, and she says, in a lot of these cases, you can see the way these people live. These people just don't give a fuck, you know? We, I, I look at the property, it's like, man, it's going to cost. The way they let the property go, the landscape and all the shit that's left on the property, the house itself that's run down, shit's falling off, it needs to be painted, the roof needs, it needs a new roof. Inside, it goes way beyond painting. There's damage to woodwork, the floors. She says, in cases, it's been up to sixty and $70,000 in a renovation cost to get the house presentable before we can even market it for the bank. Now, that's going to get added to the cost because the bank wants their fucking money. bank will never get it, and the bank's between a rock and a hard place. You know, the last thing the bank wants is your house. They just want their money. So, you know, jobs aren't going to be thrown out by next week. I'm quite sure... The bank's been in touch with them all this time. Any little bit of help they gave him along the way, well, we'll refinance it, restructure it, whatever, and then he continued to not make fucking payments. Boo fucking who? You know what I mean? Uh, in places like his, will be a money pit. It will be an absolute money pit. It's a run-down fucking shit shack. The property 
Just the clean up alone, to fix up that house to make it presentable, where someone would want to look at it and want to buy the fucking place, you know what I mean? Unless it's another fucking pig like him. Another fucking head case that just wants a flop house and maybe they'll buy it and they won't pay their fucking mortgage either. Because they know how things are going on, you know. Oh, this guy, you know, t took him two years to get him out of his place. I'll live here for two years for free. But then let him kick me out. I don't give a fuck. In the meantime, they're not paying their fucking mortgage. They don't pay their property taxes. A lot of property gets taken by the city for non-payment of property taxes. I've seen that happen to people. They put a lien on the house. You know, they have so much time to repair. Otherwise, the city will foreclose on your fucking property and take it. They're not paying their property taxes. There are a house around here, man. I, I, You know, we hear things. We see things. Water's been shut off. Gas and electric. People living here in the winter with no fucking heat, no electric, you know. <laughs> not good living conditions. It's just the way some people are. They live like fucking animals. They're not responsible. They don't give a fuck. So anyway, she says, yeah, Brian, she says, you know, in a lot of cases, I've gone to look at properties and I've, I get back to the bank. I'm like, you know, it's going to cost forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 to get this house, even up to safety code. As of right now, I'm surprised it hasn't been condemned. I'm surprised the property hasn't been condemned by now. It's so bad. The bank don't want that house. What the fuck are we going to do with this? What are we going to get if we try to sell it? If we try to sell it as is, oh, man, it's going to be a big overlap in money that's still owed. This person ain't going to fucking pay it. They weren't paying their mortgage. Like, like now they're going to stop paying something that they owe us, even though the house has been taken. You know? It's a lose-lose proposition. Banks do not really want to foreclose on their house and take possession of it. Now, if it's a real nice house, a real nice house, person's been paying on it for a long time, Maybe it's only twenty or $30,000 left on the fucking mortgage. You know? They say, well, I'll we'll take it, yeah. So maybe we just got to paint it up a little bit. Maybe we got to spend maybe five grand on it. You know, spruce it up. You know, fresh paint and stuff. You know, redo the hardwood floors or something. The lawn's nice. All we got to do is cut the lawn. We don't have to be excavating and hauling all kinds of shit out of the yard like with fucking Java. Uh, yeah, okay, we'll market it. A realtor's going to get, you know, their commission off it. They'll be happy. We'll be happy. And they'll be happy getting more than just what's owed on the mortgage. They'll even make a little bit on it. Now, according to the law, if they make anything off it, it's supposed to go back to the person. She says, nine times out of ten, Brian, it doesn't happen. There's always usually a little money owed. And the bank don't get it. They don't make it up on the re resale of the house. Nine times out of ten, the bank don't even break even when the whole deal is done. The bank will break even if they're lucky. You know? So that's the deal. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Things don't happen overnight. But these people get many chances to uh, rectify the situation. They just don't give a fuck. So, now we're going to yeah, power shift into second gear. Uncle Sanford, I hear, always still doing his yakking and yakking and yakking and back on cheap pots from China and counterfeit pots and this and that. You know, not working on any of his projects, right? And now he's ranting about cheap pots. Oh, and then I heard, I, I guess... All the mechanics in the country got together. They had an election. They had a vote. And they elected Sanford to be the spokesperson of all mechanics. Sanford's saying, explaining. Well, he's already done this. I, I recall this in the past. Reason why he doesn't want to be a mechanic. All these new cars, the way they, uh, bad parts, can't do it. You know, Sanford's a fucking dinosaur. He's stuck in the Stone Ages, you know, with carburetors and uh, points. You know what I mean? Sanford really doesn't know shit. You know? That's why people don't want to be mechanics. A lot of guys do want to be mechanics, and they're making a damn good living at it. And they're up to date. My youngest daughter that's expecting my next grandson, Benjamin, she's a office manager for the Empire Auto Group. They have two large Ford dealerships, one here, one in Fall River. They have a Hyundai and a Kia dealership in Swansea and Somerset, Mass. And uh, all their service technicians make real good money. These car dealerships make good money. Even place you run at Goodyear Firestone Service Centers. A lot of the big names Midas Muffler. They do other work besides installing mufflers and whatnot. They're very happy. They make very good money. You know, now if you're at Elmo and Zeke's garage in fucking Mayberry, you know what I mean? Maybe not so great. You know, you have a place around here, little mom and pop garages, and oh, they'll do the work for you cheap, and you get what you pay for it too. You know what I mean? They won't guarantee their work. And even then, they're still making a living. They're making a good living. 
They have no problem being a mechanic. It's only Sanford that says he doesn't want to be a mechanic. That's why he doesn't want to be a mechanic. He never really was a mechanic. His whole career, besides, you know, being a magazine writer, you know, you know, a big-time Nitro guy, you never heard of this fucking guy. He, he was a nobody. Uh, he never built anything good. His career in automotive has been chop shop, activity in New York, potting out and flipping junk cars and motorcycles, some of them. May not have necessarily had legal vintags on them. Uh, and that's about it. You don't need a lot of mechanical expertise, expertise to pull a fender off a fucking car and sell it on marketplace. So, have, you know, you don't need a lot of mechanics. He's never built a decent engine. You know, he doesn't know how. That's the thing. So now he's the official spokesperson right here for all mechanics, why people don't want to be mechanics, and mostly that's his excuse for not working on any of his shit. Uh, that's why I don't want to be a mechanic anymore. You were, a, you were not a mechanic before. What do you mean anymore? You're still not a mechanic. You never were a good quality mechanic. You never worked in any reputable place. You never owned your own reputable engine building shop. Not even a fucking gas station with a couple of pumps out front and a couple of lifts Installing muffler shocks and doing brakes and oil changes. You've never done any of that. Never. Coffee shop, bankrupt. Hookah bar, bankrupt. Your own magazine, bankrupt after three issues. Where's all your involvement with automotive mechanics? N none. None. <coughs> Zeros. No, that's not. <coughs> I'm not trying to imitate Java fighting. I'm doing a goose egg. <coughs> goose egg, not a Sanford. You know? So I guess always still yakking and yakking. Hey, anything about this power tour? This is charger all set, right? Ready to go. Isn't that next month already coming up in May or June? Something like that? Power tour's coming up. Yeah. Any more mention of that? This will come and go too. He won't make it. Something last minute will come up. Oh, the cars aren't ready. Oh, I can't get anyone to babysit my dog. Uh, he'll have some fucking excuse when the time comes. He always does. You know? He always does. Get his ass off the hook. And his pickle sniffers will ignore it. They'll let it go right by. Okay, he said he was all hyped up. Oh, yeah, try it. I'm going to get out in the power tool. Like I said, last thing he wants is to wander too far from home without a valid driver's license out on public roadways where something could happen. He could be stopped at a red light. Somebody plows him from behind. Cops show up. Oh, you again. No license. Still no license, huh? You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, I guess that's about it. So, uh, <laughs> that's the deal. That's the deal. But I got a feeling there will be more from Java. There'll be more complaining, whining, bitching, finger pointing, blaming, begging for attention, more sympathy. Hey, who knows? Maybe he'll end up back on fucking life support in the hospital again. He'll blame me. You know what I mean? Then he'll try to soul me again. <laughs> I tell you, these fucking guys, man. Oh, one other thing I will address. Who the hell was it? Was it you, Mark? Yeah, I think it was you, Mark. Mentioned something to me about, hey, Brian, you know, in your videos, you get more views than actual subs that you have. I guess it's happened on several occasions, right? Like I mentioned with Sanford, though, you know, you know, his subs are way up here. His views are, I, you won't be able to see my hand how low it is. You know, when you got 350,000 subs and you get... 18,000 views, 20,000, even 60,000 views. Whoa, it is a big fucking, dis big fucking discrepancy here. Something's wrong with that. I think I mentioned this before, and it's common knowledge, and YouTube is cracking down on it. You can find places where you can purchase subs. The way people on Facebook used to purchase likes for their pages to boost their number. It's not real people. You know, they pay so much to get so many likes on here. You pay so much, you get so many subs, a number, not real people. YouTube is cracking down on that. So I guess I don't know all the inner workings. I'm not a professional YouTuber with the algorithms and all this other bullshit and what you need to make so much money based on this and that. But because YouTube makes payouts on things, they're getting paid by sponsors, advertisers that in turn, they're able to, you know, kick, you know, a few pennies off every dollar to the person with their channel that, you know, people are watching their videos or they have so many subs. From what I understand, if I'm wrong, correct me. I could be wrong. What I understand 
your subcomp is what is what will attract the uh, the advertisers. Figure well, he's got all these subs. Yeah, we'll throw our advertisements his way. That way, you know, we'll get more exposure. Well, they get the exposure from the views, not just from the subs. The subs is what attracts people to your channel. The views is what makes money for the person that's running the channel. If I'm wrong, correct me, but that's the way it's been explained to me by a few people. So Sanford's got that big boosted number to make himself attracted to advertisers, you know, so he can try to make money. But he's only making money off the views. And a lot of advertisers have been getting wise to that shit. They're like, wait a minute, these guys, it's a fraud. It's a con job. It's fraud. You know? They're doing this to attract us to the channel, so we'll be willing to put our advertisements on their channel. But it's bullshit. It's not real subs. And I heard they're cracking down, and they're going to start looking into it. And they're going to actually, I don't know how they're going to do it. I guess they're going to find out if these are real people that subbed, or if it came from some internet source that generates these subs through a computer system and then throws that number at them to be displayed on their channel. So that's your deal. Know what I mean? But in my case, Mark, I got to be honest with you. You know, I think I replied to your comment, right? Yeah, okay. I pay people to watch my videos. That's why I get more views than subs. Yeah, I admit. I bribe them with a Jimmy's Pizza sometimes. You know, I send them money. But after I make a video, I start calling, you know, hundreds of people. Hey, go watch my video. You know, I'll pay you. You want a Jimmy's Pizza? I'll have it delivered to your house. You know, just watch my videos so my view count can go up. You know what I mean? We start doing it legit. Well, not quite. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's the deal. That's the deal. So, Saturday night, we're out with the crew tonight. Tonight we're going to be at Halo's near our headquarters. Good band playing. Real good band playing. Called a lick. L-I-K-K. Kind of like a takeoff on Kiss. K-I-S-S. No, they're not a Kiss tribute band. Just real hard rockers, man. They're either Judas Priest, you know, to Metallica. Some good shit. Some good shit. And these aren't kids either. These guys are in their 40s and shit. They've been playing for a long time. They're experienced musicians and singers. We saw them before. We saw them one time at Knuckleheads. Real good band and they attract the crowd. So we're planning on having a good time tonight. I hope you have a good time tonight. I hope you stay safe and you have fun. I usually say have fun and stay safe. I'm trying to switch things up. I even switch gears with that. No, I said stay safe and have fun instead of have fun and stay safe. See that? I always come up with something new. I'm a fucking innovator on here. Have a great day.